Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to a brand new Masechta, Masechus Krisis. We are holding enough bays right on top of the Mishnah. Now we have a list, a printout of all the different types of transgressions which can trigger a Kuris consequence. Kuris is where a fellow's life would be taken prematurely. According to some, it means it affects his kids as well. According to others, it uh, is limited to, to the person himself, except in certain cases, by Arayis, where it affects Chas uh, one's children as well. Um, in terms of the uh, the age, the Yerushalmi brings that Karis is Misa uh, Kaidam before uh, the age of 50, whereas in our Gemara Meid Kadon Chavches it says it's uh, between 50 to 60. So we have 36. The name of the Sechta technically should be uh, Kresais, because Kares, in plural, would be Kresais. But when I tried it the other night at the, uh, the shul, I got a pretty uh, amused and uh, confused um, response. So uh, Kresis it will be. So we have 36 of them. Shloishim Besheish Kresais HaBatayra. 36 types of uh, Averis which can generate Kares. Rashi points out that Karis is specific to when it was bemazed, purposely, but without hasra. Mm-hmm. Meaning, the bezin can't apply capital punishment if there wasn't a proper you know, procedure followed. So the, uh, the consequence is Karis from heaven, from Shammai. But otherwise, we have Adam, we have Asra, witnesses with pre-warning, in those situations, Bezin gets involved and applies, uh, you know, earthly punishment. In some cases, Rashi says we have Chenek, Skidla, Malkus, all different types of punishments applied depending on the violation. And as Rashi points out, if it's Beshoigeg, if it was done accidentally, then we have a Chantos, a Karm Chantos that it brings to atone for that sin. He's not sure, he wasn't uh, aware of the uh, fact that it was Asr. He didn't realize, you know, that what he was doing was was uh, was us or whatever. All different types of situations where a chatas would be warranted, as opposed to a direct punishment by way of the bezin or from heaven. Okay, so shloisha mashesh krasis batira. Habalaim. We begin with a list of uh, you know, relative arayish related isur. If all gets involved with uh, the aim, the mother alishas av. The father's wife, even though it's not his mother, Vala Kala means a daughter in law, Vala Habala Zachur, a fellow gets involved with another male, Vala Behema, with an animal, Visha Mavia, Habema Lea, a woman allows an animal to be with her, Abal Isha Bita. person gets involved with a mother and daughter. So we're speaking that it's his, his wife's daughter. Or, if you go up a, a generation, so Chamoisai, right? Let's say it's his wife and uh, his mother in law. All these types of variations are included in this Isser. And Vav Eshesish, married woman, Habal Achoisai, his sister, Valachis Aviv, his father's sister, Valachis Ima, his mother's sister. Valachis Ishta, his wife's sister, Valachis Achiv, the wife of his brother. Even after his brother's passing, while Aisha Sachi of the wife of his father's brother. And some Agaris, while Aisha Sachi Imoi, the wife of his mother's brother. Some take it off the list because there's no Karis there. We al Hanita, Othanita. Okay, so these are Arayas related Yisurim. And now we have additional Isurim, which uh, will generate Skila if we have the Adim and the Asra, but otherwise it's Kuris, Hamad Gadif, person expresses a curse, Chasashom, towards heaven, worships an idol, he uh, hands over his, uh, from his children, 
So the Moilech, which is the type of the Zara, they would uh, walk the child through the uh, through the fire, between the two uh, beams of fire, Val Oiv, a type of kishav, a type of sorcery, where he would take the bone of a deceased person and he would um, clap his, his arms, it's a whole system, how he would access, he would gain communication with the um, <laughs> the Mesa Machal Shabbos, the person that's grace of Shabbos. Now we have cases of Yisurim, where in a case of Adam and Hasra, he would get Malchus actually. With Tomish Achal Kodesh, a fellow who's uh, impure, he ate meat of a carbon, Babal Amigdash Tomi, or he entered the base of Amigdash in that state, Vaichal Chela, person eats forbidden fats of a kosher animal, with Dam, the blood, with Noiser, leftovers of a carbon, with Pigal, he ate from a uh, carbon which was turned into pigle by the um, person doing the avoid who had uh, improper thoughts, a sheikhet. Next is if a person takes a carbon and does a shechita outside the Beis Hamidosh, umal v'chutz, or puts it on a, uh, like an altar outside the Beis Hamidosh, v'echel chametz v'pesach, if a person eats chametz on Pesach, v'echel, or if a person eats on Yom Kippur, v'echel malacha, or does uh, work, v'echel kippurim, v'echel patem is Hashem, and a person prepares uh, oil, fragrant oil, using the same proportion, the same recipe as they did in the Bishamidash, and he does it for his own personal use. From Fatim Sakturis, the same with the the incense, Vasach. Or if he takes uh, some of that Shem and Hamishcha from the Bishamidash and smears himself with it, Vasach as Shem and Hamishcha. Now we have two unique. Karis <coughs> related violations which do not trigger a chatas if done b'shoyeg a pesach v'amila mitzvahs hasei these are two positive mitzvahs which if ignored fa- fails to bring current pesach fails to undergo b'shmila there is a karis as a consequence so in contrast to the previous items on the list which are negative violations Arayas, eating in Kippur, which you're not supposed to hold back from doing. And if one does them, he gets curious. Here it's the opposite. He meant to do the Pesach, meant to do the Milah. If he holds back, there's curious. So on all of these, Al Elu, and any of these on the list, Chayav and Azdani Kuris, if done purposely, Bemezi, there's Kuris, Al Shigas Echatas, if done unknowingly, there's a Chatas. Va'aloi Hoidashulahem, suppose he's unsure. Whether he actually did it or not, Asham Talid, the special covenant for that, Chutz, Minam Atam Amigdash Kadosh, except for the um, the fellow who's Tame, who got involved with a carbon, walking to Beisam Migdash. In those, there is no Asham Tali option. Because in that case, there's no standard Chatos. You see, the Asham Tali is a flip of a Chatos. In a situation which would warrant a chatas, if done, if there's an uncertainty, there is a ashan uh, tali. But matame vidish has its own unique carbon called carbon oil It goes up and down, it's fluctuating. It's not a set fixed carbon. It all depends on his financial abilities, whether it brings an animal or a bird. So in that case, there's no ashan tali option. There's another one on the list. Afamagadiv. Megalit doesn't either have an Ashram Tali nor even a Chatos. You know why? Because what's he doing? Speaking, cursing. That doesn't constitute a real physical act. It doesn't qualify as a Ma'asa according to Shittas Chacham. According to um, the earlier Shittas, yes, which is Shittas Rabbi Akiva. He says that Megadav is considered a Ma'asa. The fact, fact is, there's an expression, there's movement of the lips. But Chacham say no. Shanam Artoira Achas Yolachem Lo'isa Rishkaga. So. In the case of Oyser Bishkaga, we have you know these carbonos, Yotzim Magadav as opposed to Magadav Shein Oyser Masa. Since it doesn't constitute a real Masa, it's just words, just expressions, it doesn't qualify for a carbon. We turn to Mikvas. Min Yonah Why did the Mishnah have to begin with a, a 
citing of the number. Just count them up, you'll see it's 36. What's the point of the number? To teach us. They are separate and distinct. To the point that Imagine he did all 36 in one hell in one experience, one experience of forgetfulness, not realizing that any of these are us. It's not just one carbon for all. Each one gets its own chatos. Each one is distinct, has its own need for kapar. Two, another question. How does now we have a Mishnah back in Mishnah Shabbos, likewise? Presents a list and begins with a number. Why is the number necessary? So what is non avayis malachas are boim chasarachas? How many primary forms of work on Shabbos? Forty minus one, meaning thirty-nine. Minyan What's the point of mentioning a number? Just add them up. The same point. Shemasan kulan belam echad. Imagine if you violate all thirty-nine in one sitting. Chayev al kolachas v'achas. Each one gets its own chatas. So what is non? The next question. We have a Mishnah. Uh, further in our Masechter, we have four examples of individuals who need to bring karbanis to complete their kapara, to complete their purification process. So, even though technically they're not really sinners, they're exper- experienced impurities, but they have to bring karbanis to complete their process. And the Mishnah lists them out. You have a zav and a zav, you have a lettuce, mitzur. why bother mentioning a number? Minyan alamali. Lafuke as opposed to a shita which adds another one. Midrabali Azur, Binyakov, this non the Amar Hamisha Havu. It's really five. This non as the mission says, Rabbi Yaakov Aimar, Ger, a convert, is on the list of Mukhusakapara. Achi Zarak Tam Allah until he gets the blood of the Ayla processed. He's considered Mukhusakapara, he can't have carbon, he's can't catch catch him. So in contrast to that shita, which adds another one, that's why the Bryce, the Mishnah, expresses the number four to tell you, by us it's only four, we don't have that fifth one. So what is not? What about the other Mishnah? In four situations, a fellow can bring a carbon, typically a carbon is for a shaygik, for accidental, inadvertent, unawareness. But in four cases, a person will bring a carbon even if it's an outright violation, a purposely done violation. A Nazar that became Tamei, uh, a person who violates Shvu Asa Eidah, Shvu Asa Pikadim. Again, what's the point of mentioning the number? Just count them out. Okay. Midr Shimon, the point is that it's four as opposed to three, which is Rab Shimon Shita the Sanya, Rab Shimon Aimer, Shvu Asa Pikadim. A person swore falsely regarding, in response to a monetary claim, Where a fellow accused him of allegedly uh, hiding, you know, a pikada in uh, something which he took uh, and trusted with, and in any case, that uh, type of situation turns out that he swore falsely. If it was amazing, there's no uh, kapara. There's no carbon for that. But the uh, Mishnah, which disagrees with that uh, opinion, does consider shvos pikada on that list. That's why it says four. To include this one. Two others. Now, what about the next Mishnah? We have five individuals that can bring, for many violations, just one carbon. One carbon covers it all. And the Mishnah goes and expresses all the uh, examples. Why bother with the number? Because the Mishnah wanted to include the Nazar on this list. Which is controversial, it's a whole discussion, depends on many factors, and th- that's why the, the Mishnah expressed the number. Don't think that we have, you know, something inaccurate, maybe uh, one more, one less. No, it's five. And all five are covered, all five on the list. That explains the other numbers as well, because five denotes accuracy, is that room for, you know, modification. So, what's the case of a Nazir? Who will cover many violations with one carbon? We have another committed to uh, in the zero's process to refrain from tuma, etc. He became tummy. He brings a carbon to complete, you know, this aborted process and starts again. Imnit matuma sahabi can have another 
going to involve us many tumors. And only one carbon will, will be required. How is that going to happen? How could you have many tumors? Each one is sort of being a separate experience, but still covered under the same carbon. Could go into Tami Bishvi. And almost like this. He was a Nazar, he became Tami. Now, what happens? He's meant to re- count seven days and start his Nazirus again. But his carbon he only brings on the eighth day. So, the question is when does the, start, the clock start ticking again? When does he restart the process? When he finishes this seven day count, or he has to wait until he brings his new carbon. So let's see. So what happened was, Kigoyin Ditami Bishvi, he started counting the seven days, and he became Tami again on the seventh day. So he started counting another seven days. And boom, once again, on the seventh day of that second count, V'chazar, V'nitim Bay Mashvi, so it turns out that he became Tami three times. One, then again at the end of seven, then at the end, again at the end of seven. Umani. Now who's of the opinion that he only brings one carbon to account for everything? Rabbi Yisi, Rabbi Yudi, it's that opinion that Amur says, Nazir is the Tahara, The truth is that he begins his brand new uh, Nazir, uh, you know, experience, Nazir is the Tahara, proper Nazir is, on day seven. Although the carbon for the aborted failed Naziris only uh, brings tomorrow. So it turns out that technically he had already begun his new count today on day seven and became tummy again. So it's like a new tumor experience. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he will only have to bring one carbon accountable. Why? Why is that? The reason is because he wasn't yet able to bring a carbon until tomorrow. That's the Allah. All agree, he can only bring a carbon tomorrow, on the eighth day. So the chiv of carbon wasn't yet activated, wasn't yet triggered until tomorrow. And therefore, since he never got to a point that he's able to bring a carbon, ultimately, he will only bring one carbon for everything. You see, if he would have waited until tomorrow to become tummy again, tomorrow, ah, it's a new slate. He's already high of a carbon for the previous aborted, failed experience. And now, he would have to bring a new carbon for today's aborted, failed experience. But since he never got to that point, he never got to the point where a carbon was applied to him in practice, because he got tummy on day seven. So although it's separate to mice, because once day seven arrives, he begins counting anew. It's like a new, serious experience. And then it becomes tummy again next time on day seven. It's a brand new tum experience. So it's separate tumors, but it's covered under the same car. The time are Rabbi. So this only works according to Rabbi Yehuda, who begins the new Nazirus on day seven. So it's a new experience, new tumor, but it's still covered under, under the same car. Because according to Rabbi, this wouldn't work. Because he says, only begin the new count tomorrow. So it becomes tummy today on day seven. It's still part of the same old experience. It's not a new tumor. It's not like many tumors covered the same curve. No, it's the same old tumor just being reiterated and repeated, right? The time of Rebbe, because according to Rebbe, even the Nazirus, the Taharat Shemini Lechaila, since the new Nazirus, new clock doesn't start ticking until tomorrow, until day eight, which hadn't yet arrived. Hey, how could you have? A situation of many carbon, many uh, one carbon, or many uh, many tumors. If it became tummy again on day seven, and then again on the next day seven, it's all one and the same experience. It's like a a long tumor experience. It's not many violations. Aren't many experiences? Oh, maybe became tummy only on day eight, and then again eight days later. Well, in that case, you're right. It's a brand new experience, a brand new tumor, but problem is, it will warrant a brand new carbon. Kirvan the Yatsa Bisha, how do you love about carbon? Since before he became tummy again on day eight, he was already available for that new carbon. That carbon had already been activated and applied to him. 
So you can't take the same carbon and uh, cover more violations with it. Chayev al kolachas vachas. You have to have a separate carbon for each tuma. El Hashma Menorah, Rabbi Yisir, read the apparently that Mishnah, which says that you can have a Nazar covering many tumas, many experiences with the same carbon. Shema Menorah that confirms Rabbi Yisir. Be'er Rabbi Yehudi, he's going like that shita, and again that explains why the Mishnah cited a number to remove any uh, ambiguity, any uh, you know, uh, any doubt in terms of leaving Nazar on that uh, on that list. Five is five without negotiation. My Rabbi, who my Rabbi is reader, wouldn't we find this machlekes between Rabbi who says that the uh, Nazar became tummy and counted seven, only begins his new count on day eight, whereas Rabbi Yisi. But Rabbi Yudah holds, he begins his new experience on day 7. The sign of Bekidash es Reisha Bayamahu. So the Nazar became Tame, he counts his days, and then he starts with Makadish as Reisha, he starts letting his hair grow, starts, you know, counting the new um, experience in the new Nazirus. Bayamahu, on that day, which day? Bayam Habas Kabarnaisaf, that's on day 8, the day that he brings his Kabarnas, the Rabbi. Rabbi Yesi, Vidaimer, no. Bayamahu means. Yom Teglach, the day that he shaved his hair, which is on day 7. Okay, another example of a number cited in the Mishnah. So what is not? Chamisham, a being carbon oil of a year. We have five individuals who will bring this unique, uh, you know, fluctuating, unfixed carbon oil of a year, up and down, depending on his financial standing. Min, Yon, again, what's the point of the number 5? Mishnah, Ketani, Seifa. Because in that very Mishnah, it uh, proceeds to tell us that these five um, are unique to uh, an individual as opposed to the public. So typically there's something called a parhelam davashal tzibur, right, of the, the best and misled the public to sin, so there's a special karma for that. But that's uh, only for violations which trigger a standard karma chatas, but not these five that trigger this unique carbon oil of Yerid. The Nasi creates a behind likewise. A Nasi, a king, he brings his own unique uh, brand of carbon and uh, will not be high with carbon in these, uh, you know, five situations. Tanech HaMishnah, that's why the Mishnah began with the number five, to tell us that, in fact, we have five, uh, you know, examples of such, which have all these details. Lafuk is opposed to me, the answer, the Amor says, Nasi may be Sawyer. He says that um, a Nasi will bring a Sawyer, like any other uh, violation that he does. And that, that compelled the, uh, the Tana to mention the number five to tell you that on all these five situations, We exempt the, uh, the Nasi, etc., as opposed to uh, Rebel Yezer, who disagrees, and there's room to think that maybe uh, some of these five cases we make an exception. There's all discussion there in the Gemara and Nurius, different opinions there, so that's why the Bryce wanted to, the Mishnah wanted to keep it clear cut. You should know we have five examples of Elav Yered, all five are, you know, sort of in the same boat. Individual brings that, but not the Tzibur, not the Nasi. Okay, two of the Snan, we have another example of a number. Beginning of Avakama, Abba and Zikan, the four primary forms of damage. Damagers, a bull, right? A pit, you have a, an animal chewing away. You have, I mean, you know, normally, what's the point of the number? Just count them out. You'll see it's four. A fuk as opposed to a different version, which has a much longer list. La fuk the Rabbiashia, the Amar Shleisha Asur, Abba and Zikan, he counts 13. The Mishnah wanted to limit it to four for the reasons discussed back in Mavakam. Ura Beisha Minanat Lamali, Kodra Beisha, who expands it to uh, 13, why did he have to have a number to kick off his list? Just count them. Lafuki, Mid Rabbachir, as opposed to Rabbachir, who has an even more expanded list. Amar Esra, Bava, and Zikanaim, we have 24 different types. Ura Beisha Minanat Lamali, now Kodra Beisha, why the number? I mean, he's at the top. Just count them up. Because there are two examples which are not cited and deliberately left off that list. Masur, a person who hands over the 
It's friends properly to a guy, right? A miser, a fagel, or a vakayin, while doing the avoid on the carbon, thinks, you know, inappropriate thoughts, invalidating the carbon. So although these two uh, fellows are certainly accountable for their actions, but uh, they don't belong on that list, because that list has only always and zikim, which have unique halacha, is you pay the best of your property, and uh, these uh, two individuals do not have that stipulation. So that's why he has a number on his list. You should know it's 24. It's exactly 24. Fine, let's go back to the uh, beginning of al Gamara. So why do we have the number 36? Rabbi Echen tells us, you know why? Because if he did all of them at once, now realizing that they're Asr, don't think it, it's covered by one chatas. Each one is unique and individual, distinct, with its own carbon. Amar Let's go back and review. Rabbi Yechon's statement. Shim Asun Kulan Belam Echad. If he uh, transgressed all 36 violations in one experience, one sitting of forgetfulness. Chayev Al Kolachas Vachas. Says the Gemara. Okay. Bishleima. Pato Lagamra Lematzas Amris. So, you, you certainly can't say that there's no room to think that if a person only violates part of the, let's say, Arayis, he's Potter, because only Chayif does them all. Yechsev. <speaking in Hebrew> means any one of these, uh, even part, he commits, uh, you know, transgresses up, uh, you know, part of that list, would also trigger but still, why can't we say it like this? Fine, you don't have to do them all to trigger, uh, you know, consequence. But perhaps if one is over one, we have one carbon. But if he does them all in one experience of unawareness, meaning he didn't realize, right? So. Uh, it's one continuous shgaga, not realizing that all these things are awesome. And the chayv perhaps only chayv one chantos. Our Rabbi Yechon lakach yatsa kares ba'achay se lechalik. I'll tell you how I know that each experience is deemed separate, and each arise of transgression gets its own chantos. Because that's why the Torah pointed out that achay by a sister this kares, which seems unnecessary to explain, once the Torah already told us, in general, regarding the Arayas in general, there's Kharis, including the Achoyse, uh, the sister. So why did Torah have to point out and mention Kharis again and separate by the sister to tell us that each Arayas, each Erva, is distinct and separate and has its own punishment. And the Zachat is one per transgression. Mask of the Rabbeve. Bay by Barabai. He has a question on Rabbi Yechon. How do you know from Achoysay that every erva is separate? Ema Achoysay the part of Akron Chayev Chad Allah. True, perhaps Achoysay, since it was singled out. There is a separate Chiyav for Achoysay, but all the other Arayas are bundled together as one. Vichulon, Kivan, the Behelam Echad, then Chayev Lachas. But perhaps all the rest of the Arayas, if they had been committed in the same sitting of the uh, same. Uh, experience of unawareness without realizing, you know, in between that there is Isr, perhaps only one Chiv, one Chattas for all of them. Ask the Gemara. Will Rabbebe Barabaye mean lastly, Hadad the Sanya? Rabbebe doesn't hold to the Brisa, which tells us that when the Torah singles something out from a group to highlight something special, it's not just something unique for that item that's been singled out. That's a revelation on the entire group. It goes back and clarifies and teaches about the rest as well. Just as a chayse is separate and distinct and carries its own consequence, likewise every single one of the arise as well. Something which had been included in a, in a group, in a collective discussion, and then was singled out. Was singled out of the group to teach, not just for itself. Didn't go out just to teach for itself. 
who were singled out to clarify about the rest of the group as well. Keita, for example, Vanevah Shashatoich al Basr. The Torah already warned against eating a carbon when one is in a state of impurity. Why does the Torah have to go and identify the Shlomim again? To point out that it's Asr, right? That there's chorus for eating it when one is tummy. What's the point? This Shlomim that we're talking about now, was already included in the rest of the Karbonas, which a tummy can eat. Of course he can't eat a Shlomim as well. So what's the point of singling him out? The point is to connect the other Karbonas to the Shlomim. He's the highlighter. The reason why he's chayef for eating betuma is only because shlomim is an example of kachim isbech, a carbon for him isbech. Af koil shen kachim isbech of nalein. The chayev is only in kachim isbech. You also kachim betukavai is supposed to be like a bias material. The person eats them when he's tummy. There's no curries. So what do we see from here? That when the Torah singles something out of a group, it's not just to give him special status. It's the highlight st- status of the rest of the group as well. So likewise by Yachoyisai, which was singled out for Kharis, not just for itself, rather to teach that every single erva has a separate Kharis. Amr Lach Barabai. So he would respond like this. Umina, exactly the opposite. From that Brisa, I will garner support for my position. Meaning, lab mi amr's hasam, just like over there by the shlamim, we say yotzu but kachav the kabayis. The shlamim sets the tone, provides a precedent. Chiv kares betuma is only by kachav is bech, not kachav the kabayis. Similar to the shlamim, hachanam here as well. What the Torah is doing by single yad achosay for kares is to tell us, yes, it has to be similar to achosay. In order to get its own chorus, to get its own chatos. Ma chayisim yechedes she erva. Vein lahat to b'chayy oisra. What's unique about a chayisim? She's an erva, a relative. There's no potential for permissibility in the lifetime of the oiser of the you know the, the the cause of prohibition. Meaning, meaning, there's no possibility of heter to the brother. Av koyel shein lahat to b'chayy oisra. Likewise. Any example of a relative that has, that shares similar characteristics, Shein Lahetab Chayyoyse has no possibility of heter in the lifetime of the source of Yisr. Okay, so in that case, granted, you chayv separately for that situation. But, as opposed to Yotza Isha, Isha, married woman, whose Yisr came about by way of that marriage, what's the source? What's the catalyst? What's the trigger point of that Yisr? The husband. Well, that isn't necessarily a permanent situation. Potentially a person, a woman, could become mutter. Even during the lifetime of her husband, who's causing the Isra. For instance, if he divorces her. So perhaps she's different than the rest of the pack. And perhaps she doesn't get her own carbon. No, for that we need a new drasha. We tame by some say, who know, brother, we sure, Amar Kra. How do I know that there is a separate consequence per person, even Ishish Amakro? So at the conclusion of the list of the Arias there it says, If one commits any of these, so it's sort of a tie together. Third now is tying all the Arias together with the Achoisai, just like by the Achoisa, we've already confirmed that she gets her own. Consequence, Avkoil, Chayav, and Alabifne Asma. Likewise, all the other Arayas, each one gets its own carbon. And that's it, done deal. We do not uh, challenge when it's a Hekish, when it's a Lima done in this manner. Hence, we know that every single Erva is considered separate and distinct from the rest. And if, in fact, a person violates all that, in one Shkaga, there is a separate carbon per individual. Ulur Abitzak, the Amar Chayav, Christus, Bechlal Chayav. Now, interestingly, there's another opinion. Rabbi Yitzhak holds 
And the reason why the Torah singled out Achoysa was for a different reason altogether. And if that's the case, we're stuck again. Where's the source that each uh, one of the Arayas gets its own uh, Chantas? According to him, he says, Chayav Ekrisa B'chalal Chay. Olam Yatsa Karbak. Yatsa Karbak Achoysa. So we have all the... Uh, All the people that are high of chorus bundled together, right? It says, when anybody does any of these te'evos, v'nichersu, right? The passage we just mentioned before. V'lam v'yatsu chorus b'achai. He says, why did the Torah highlight chorus specifically to the sister? L'aduna v'chorus lo v'malkos. They teach us that whenever there's a chorus option, there is no malkos option. Suppose the, the witnesses were there and they warned him, oh, you're going to do this, you're going to get malkos. There's no malkos. Chorus preempts malkos. And that's what we learn from the fact that the Torah singled out Kharis by Achoysa, Kharis and not Malkus. And likewise, all the other Arais, all the other, you know. Okay, so once she already used the, up this single Gara Achoysa for a different Allah, 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 how does he know the point of Allah to separate the Arais and deem them distinct and individual? Nafkali has another drush. Don't get involved with an Isha while she's, time, while she's Nida. Why the word Vel Isha? The word Isha is to tell you the Chalik Al Kol Isha 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 has her own separate status. So each Arayis gets her own Chatos. V'Rabban and Nami Tevik Lu. Mi Vel Isha Why do they have to go to the Achoysoi? Uh, why can't they just learn from here? In Achanami, right? They could learn it from here. El Koris Achoysoi to Mayasla. What's the point of singling out Koris by Achoysoi? It's unneeded for. You know, distinction and separation of the arayas. It's coming to tell us something else. So you have three forms of sisterhood, so to speak. A regular sister, father sister, mother sister. So they're all part of the sort of sister category. So I would think maybe if a fellow gets involved with all three in one forgetfulness, maybe there's only one violation. Oh, that's why the Pasuk singles out. Achoy said to tell you, no. The sister is separate. And this type of sister is separate. This type, each one is separate and distinct. Says the Gemara, why would I, why would I even think that they're all covered under the same umbrella? Why do I have to separate between these types? The fact is, the fact is, there are different titles, different types of relatives. Different types, different people here. Three different people, three different types. Rather, we have to distinguish in the following case. You have one person that has three types of sisterhood statuses. She's a sister. So imagine a person has a sister who happens to be his mother's sister and his father's sister. Pretty complicated case while she brings it. So we have to be over there. Hold them accountable for all three elements of Erva. So, although she's one the same person, but since she has three elements of Achoysa in her, three times. According to Bitsak, who used the Achoysa for a different purpose. How we know, would you know this halacha? Now, if save it, look at that same Pasak at the end where it says again, it points out, it singles out Achoysa. I tell you that in this case there are three separate violations. Rabban and Achoysa save the Quran. My Abdullah, what did Rabban do with that last expression? The Pasuk Achoysa and Abayle. It's for something else. We turn to the next topic. Another similar type of bundle situation to tell you that they're distinct and separate. La Achoysa Yishi Bas Avi Vivasim. You have a sister who happens to be a sister from both sides, also his father's daughter and also his mother's daughter. So there's room to think that maybe this was only if she's a choysoy uh, from the father's side or from the mother's side. How do you know that if it's all together in the same person? A full sister from all sides. You are chayiv. That's why we need this added expression. To cover this case as well. Because really it's plain logic. I mean, if the Torah elsewhere states that a half-sister is sufficient to be considered an erva. 
either from his mother's side or from his father's side. So certainly, when both come together, I mean, it's even more <laughs> it's a greater sister, right? It's a fuller sister. But that would be a din, that would be kavachem, and we don't uh, punish based on kavachem. And that's exactly what the Pasuk is teaching us. I have to highlight to you, says the Pasuk, that a full sister with which you share a father and mother is also us. So don't think it's just, you know, kavachem, it's plain logic. For Rabbi Yitzchak, Savayin Shemina Adin. The Rabbi Yitzchak already used this Pasuk for his other halacha. How does he know this? A full sisterhood uh, liability, because he holds that you can uh, punish based on kavachem. And once the Torah established that there is an Isser for a half sister, certainly a full sister, but he's saying, another way is that he learns the punishment from the warning. Just as we find the Torah warns um, by a full sister as well, Rashi brings the Pasik, and uh, by extension, there's a punishment as well. There's no need to have a special Pasik punishment. Okay. So we have the uh, 36 uh, forms of. of a violation which trigger curries if there's no Eidim Hasra. On the flip side, there's a Chatas of Islam B'Shaygig. In most cases, except for the uh, Pesach and the Chatas. And again, typically there's an Ashim Tali. There's an uncertainty involved. What's the point of the number? It says Rabbi Yechnan, Shem Asan Kulam Belam Echad. He committed all of them in one Shigaga, not realizing that all, the, all these things are Asr. Don't think it's one. Chatos covers them all. How do we know? So either it's because of the achayse that was singled out to teach us that each erva is distinct and separate, or because of el isha benis to masa that each isha is separate. We also explain why the psukim, um, why the mishnas throughout shas begin with numbers to highlight their accuracy and exactness in terms of the items mentioned on that list. Okay, all the best to you and that's